Hi everyone and welcome to morning coffee break. Hope everybody's doing good today. Kitty's up here saying hi. How are you doing? She's sitting right beside the phone. Okay, today is Thursday, October 5th. Currently it's 62 degrees. What are you doing, kitty? Hmm, leave that alone. That's not a scratching post or something. He's scratching around on a box. Okay, uh, yeah, 62 degrees. High today is 77. So she says, if I can't have my box to scratch on, I'll just leave. <laughs> she took off. High today, 77. No chance of rain again. And wind at four mile per hour. And mom, my mom told Joy, uh, they're calling that there might be a darn uh, freeze, frost uh, Sunday. I hope not. I mean, uh, everything's so small out there, it would just totally kill it. And that's what happened last year. Um, I had a bunch of stuff killed uh, that way. So I guess since these are so small, they won't have as much problem being covered. Because um, that'll smash stuff too if you cover it with like a heavy tarp. So I think I'm going to try to, if that's true and I see that in the forecast, I'll have to get some uh, regular plastic and put over it. Just enough to, you know, keep it from getting frost on it. I don't know. That's awful early. That's what happened last year. I hope it doesn't happen. Okay. Um, let's see. Today there will be a Dollar Tree haul. We had to go back uh, because um, that shirt that I got, uh, it, it did not fit. It was That's the smallest extra large I've ever seen. It was more like a a large or a medium or something it I don't know if they it said uh, extra large on the you know tag but I've never seen one that small that's supposed to be an extra large so we took it back and uh, what they do is they went ahead and rang it up, our order up uh, I thought they were just gonna let us swap something out you know um, but they uh, at the end, he had the manager come over there, and she uh, took the, the UPC off the tag for the um, shirt, and then she, you know, did it, and then put a minus figure. So it took it took five dollars off there at the bottom. So, yeah, we weren't going to keep it if it didn't fit right. I mean, uh, so so we ended up getting more stuff. We ended up looking around. Not not a huge, huge haul, but, you know, a decent size haul. Um, some neat stuff. So check it out, definitely. Um, what's for dinner? We've got to go to the store. I, we're trying to make those chicken sandwiches like they have at um, Chick-fil-A with the pimento cheese. And I didn't get everything. Uh, we went to Walmart. I'll have a, I'll have a, a, a Walmart haul. And we were we did pretty good. We didn't go crazy. Walmart haul, and also I did a walkthrough of the Halloween section uh, while I was there because they had so much stuff. Uh, I thought it might be interesting to, to y'all. Um, but I forgot to get the jalapenos. There's supposed to be jalapenos on. I want mild jalapenos, and um, that's that's what I need for that. And I think I'm gonna have to look and see if I still. I wanted to use that red bag chicken from uh, Walmart, I mean from uh, Aldi, because it's so good. I'll have to look and see if I've got some. If not, I'll have to buy some chicken. But we're gonna try to make those, <coughs> those sandwiches like they have at uh, Chick-fil-A, since they're like $7 and some. I think it was six eighty one or something crazy. Uh, almost $7 I saw a, uh, a taste test for them. Everybody I've seen taste test them seem to like them so far and we love pimento cheese so i don't know if joy wants hers that way but that's fine i know logan and i want to try it like that and then we're going to have some slaw and probably some seasoned fries with that uh, so yeah that's it sounds good i mean i've always you know and when i was i might have said it the other day but bojangles they had that deal, they had those sandwiches like that a long time ago. I don't remember if they had jalapeno on them, 
but I know that they had, you could actually have the, you could have their um, pimento cheese put on any sandwich they had. I think even the breakfast sandwiches at that time. I haven't seen anything about it lately over there. But uh, you could also buy the pimento cheese when they had it from Bojangles. So I don't know, that's kind of copying them in a way if you ask me. But I think Chick-fil-A is probably getting more popular than the one from Bojangles did. Okay, on, uh, do I not have my glasses? I, I know I brought my glasses. I thought I did. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And while I'm at it, please press the like button. I really do appreciate that, and it helps my channel very much. Um, I know you're going to like morning coffee break because we are doing these uh, trivia and all this stuff. So, so press the like button for me. It just takes a split second, and it's, it's free. And also subscribe if you haven't already and share this out and hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. So I'll get that out of the way. Okay, it is World Space Week from October 4 through 10. World Space Week. And I've always been fascinated with uh, space and space travel and stuff. Uh, World Space Week runs from October 4 through 10. This year's theme is space and entrepreneurship. This is to recognize the growing significance of the commercial space industry. P.S. Solar eclipse viewing events will happen in Florida, Colorado, and Mississippi on October 14. So that's that. Also, here's uh, this is overdue, I think. For they're probably, I hope they start doing this to some more companies that are putting all this junk in space. Dish Network hit with 150,000 fine over space debris neglect. You know, I think that what it is is these companies, it costs money, I'm sure, to have things uh, done with these or whatever, but um, they're just leaving outdated, you know, satellites and stuff that are they're not even being used or something, you know. It says the U.S. Federal Communications Commission has issued a fine to Dish Network for violating its anti-space debris rule. The company has to pay $150,000 over its failure to deorbit its Echo Star 7 satellite, which has been in space for two decades. Instead of properly deorbiting the satellite, DISH sent it into a disposal orbit, posing a debris risk. Yeah, it's not its not doing anything, you know? Um, so, how, looks like it would just be a matter of almost flipping a switch or something, you'd think. To, to have it come out of orbit and just burn up and, uh, and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know why they haven't just gone ahead and done that. And this one says, Zun, Zun Tian, China's big move to challenge NASA's Hubble. China is readying a major project, a spacecraft ca craft called Zun Tian. I think that's how you spell it, Zun Shen or something. Z-U-N-T-I-A-N. Scheduled for launch next year, the bus-sized spacecraft houses a 6.6-foot diameter primary mirror. The ultraviolet optical space telescope is designed to outdo NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and is set to co-orbit with the country's Tiangong Space Station. Ha-ha, <laughs> ours is better than yours. <laughs> you know, come on. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see if we can find some jokes of the day. Everybody seemed to be liking the trivia and the jokes and stuff. I'm glad. I appreciate y'all watching and uh, checking it out and everything. And a lot of y'all, I notice, are, are keeping up, you know, seeing how many uh, you get right and everything. A lot of you are actually really good. And doing better than me, some of y'all seem to be okay this one is uh, the joke is what my doctor told me my doctor told me to eat more taco bell hey all right i like that doctor well he actually said less mcdonald's but i'm sure i'm pretty sure i know what he meant <laughs> the doctor said eat less mcdonald's so it, uh, he took that as to eat more taco bell is taco bell any better for you really uh, than McDonald's, I don't know. Uh, I've never know, you know, seen the nutrition facts on stuff. 
This one is called Consultant's Commandments. If at first you don't succeed, destroy all evidence that you tried. A conclusion is the place where you got tired of thinking. Experience is something you don't get until just after you need it. For every action, there was an equal and opposite criticism. He who hesitates is probably right. <laughs> Never do card tricks for the group you play poker with. <laughs> okay. Uh, fact of the day. Jellyfish have no brains. They are brainless. They are also boneless and heartless. Jellyfish also have no central nervous system, yet they are very dangerous and very poisonous and can kill you instantly. So they have, don't have a brain, don't have a heart. How are they even alive? You know? I mean, what are they? I don't know. What keeps them alive then? Okay. And I saw one um, up here. Maybe this one might be about uh, celebrities. I'll, I'll see. Okay. What is Dolly Parton's main musical genre? Punk, soul, country, disco. I'd like to see uh, Dolly sing a punk rock song. <laughs> you know? I would. That'd be interesting. Okay, I'm going to say country, and that is right, so i got to put my numbers down here, I'll do it down here, i got more room. So i got one right. Next question, where did hip-hop music originate? Oklahoma, Texas, New York, Louisiana. Hmm, somehow I don't see Oklahoma or Louisiana being the home to punk rock, or I mean hip-hop. Uh, Texas, I don't, uh, I, I, you just want to think, I just want to think New York. It just seems kind of obvious, I don't know. I could be wrong, though, no, let's see. Right. Two right, next question. Well, let's, I'll read some of this one. Hip-hop is a subculture and an art movement that emerged from the Bronx and New York City during the early 1970s. Its development reflected the negative effects of post-industrial decline, political discourse, and a rapidly changing economy. Next question. Which of these traditional dances is associated with Spain? Hmm. Flamenco? Tango? Hula, samba. Hmm. I don't. I, hula. It's not. It wouldn't be hula. Samba. I'm not for sure. I'm not about this. I want to say, just the first thing that popped into my head was flamenco. You know, that's the first thing that popped into my head. So I'll go with that. And it's right. Usually your first uh, reaction to something like that, you, whatever you think first, is, is lots of times it'll be right. It says, undoubtedly one of the most famous cultural exports from Spain, flamenco is in fact so much more than just a dance. It's an art form recognized as part of the masterpieces of the oral and tangible, intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO. Next question. In which 1950s singer is described as the architect of rock and roll? Hmm. Boy, I don't. I only, only really know one. Little Richard, Wanda Jackson, Johnny Ace, Smiley Lewis. Now I know you know Little Richard. I guess that was you know what they would call rock and roll back then. Uh, I, I've never heard of Wanda Jackson's. Uh, Johnny Ace or Smiley Lewis. So I I'm just going to go with it. Uh, Little Richard. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's four right. And it says Richard Wayne Penniman. Uh, he was born in uh, December 5th, 1932, and died May 9th, 2020. Uh, known professionally as Little Richard, 
was an American musician, singer, and songwriter. He was an influential figure in popular music and culture for seven decades. Described as the architect of rock and roll. Next question. Ragtime is the forerunner of what genre? Opera, jazz, folk, pop. Okay. Ragtime, um, if, if I remember, it's pretty, you know, uh, peppy music or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but I don't think it, I don't think it's opera or folk or pop. I think it's jazz. It's either opera, jazz, folk, or pop. I think it's jazz. Right. Five of them. It says, Ragtime is a propulsively syncopated music style, one forerunner of jazz and the predominant style of American popular music from about 1899 to 1917. I didn't know it started that early. Ragtime evolved in the playing of honky-tonk tonk pianists along the Mississippi and Missouri rivers in the last decades of the 19th century. Next question. All right. What kind of music did American artist Robert Johnson make? I never heard of him. Never heard of him. He does, and it says pop, country, blues, or punk. I don't think it's pop or punk. Robert Johnson. To me, it, it, it's got to be either country or blues. And to me, I've never heard of him in country music. I'm going to say blues. Blues, final answer? Yes. <laughs> Man, I'm on a roll. That's six right. Uh, Robert Leroy Johnson, uh, May 5th, 1911. He died in August 16, 1938. My goodness, that's only 27, right? Three. 27 years old when he died. Was an American blues mus musician and songwriter. His landmark recordings in 1936 and 37 display a combination of singing, guitar skills, and songwriting talent that later that influenced later generations of music, musicians. I want to see. Although his recording career spanned only seven months, wow, he is now recognized as a master of the blues. Doesn't say that he was the first ever rock star. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame describes him as being the first ever rock star. Doesn't say how he died. But that's from 1911 to 38. That's only 27 years. So that's awful young. Okay, next question. Which of these traditional, which of these is a traditional Cuban musical style? Celtic, rock, mambo, yodeling. I've always seen lots of, of Cubans yodeling, you know, up in the Swiss Alps, you know. <laughs> I haven't ever heard of any really Cuban rock groups. Celtic, isn't that like Scottish, Irish, that area? So I'm going to have to say Mambo, the Mambo. It shows here. I don't know if that's the Mambo they're dancing, but okay. Mambo, final answer. Yes. Seven. How are y'all doing? I like this. This is one of the different ones I hadn't tried yet. Mambo, as a Cuban musical style with remarkable African roots, appeared in 1938, created by the Cuban musician Orestes Lopez. Nevertheless, Damaso Perez Prado, a Cuban band leader and composer, first used the term mambo years later. Next question. With what genre of music is Bill Haley associated with? And I really think I know this. Uh, jazz, classical, rock and roll, pop. What do you think? Bill Haley did that song... Um, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock. 
4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, rock. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, rock, gonna rock around the clock tonight. Isn't that what they used for uh, Happy Days, I think, or something? Okay, I'm gonna say rock and roll. Right. Now, music is one of my, you know, I know a lot about, if you've seen my shorts, you know I lot of, know a lot of different music. Everything I've played on my shorts, I've definitely heard tons of times, and most of those groups, probably at least 80% of them, I've seen in concert before. Used to, they, right over the hill here where they did the fireworks, it's called Freedom Hall. There's the junior highs there too, and that's where Joy went to junior high and, and Logan. Um, that's where they had the, uh, in Freedom Hall, they used to have concerts all the time, one after another. It was amazing. Um, my ears are still ringing. They actually are. My ears ring all the time. Okay, William John Clifton Haley, uh, 1925 to 81. He died in 81. Was an American rock and roll musician. He is credited with many by first popularizing this form of music in the early 1950s with his group Bill Haley and his Comets and a million and million songs such as hits such as Rock Around the Clock, See You Later Alligator, Shake Rattle and Roll, Rocket 88, Skinny Mini, and Razzle Dazzle. I really only know pretty much Rock Around the Clock. I've, I've heard of that See You Later Alligator, but I don't know how it goes. Okay, next question, that's eight. What is the typical dance in the carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil? Salsa? Waltz, tango, samba. Okay. Hmm. Well, we never did determine what tango was, but it just doesn't sound like uh, in the carnival. And I want to say salsa. You know, salsa. I mean, I could I could have my first wrong here. Salsa. No, it was Samba. I missed one. Eight, um, eight right and one wrong. If you're ready for the biggest and longest Samba dance marathon ever, then you're ready for the carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Put your best foot forward and shake that booty as you follow the trail of sequins and feathers left by the world's biggest Samba street parades. Wow, I missed one. Next question. This should be the last one. Which family of musical instruments does the cello belong to? Percussion, string, woodwind, brass. Now I'm not, I know it's not percussion or brass, but it is, it is a string instrument. But I don't know how you, if you call it woodwind. I mean, it shows one, right? Isn't that a stringed instrument? Uh, is that some kind of trick? They're calling it woodwind. It's either string or woodwind. Let's see. I'm going to go with string. It's just obvious. Yes. So I managed to get nine and one today. How did y'all do? The strings are the largest family of instruments in the orchestra, and they come in four sizes. The violin, which is the smallest. The viola, V-I-O-L-A, cello, and the biggest, the double bass, sometimes called the contrabass. The smaller instruments of violin and viola make higher pitch sounds while the ch larger cello and double bass produce low rich sounds. Okay, everybody, that's going to be it today for morning coffee break. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying these trivia and the jokes uh, each day. And if I have time, I'll do some other things. But, um, you know, I, I really like it too. I like, I love trivia. So, everybody, I hope you have a great day. Definitely check out the Dollar Tree Hall today. It's a good one, and I'll talk to you later. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.